Thank you for selecting this VSS presentation on sampling frequency. In this presentation, we'll learn what sampling frequency is and where it is used. Sampling frequency is one of the most fundamental concepts that has to be understood before you do anything in VSS. First and foremost, the sampling frequency of a system is defined by a source. When working with a tone source, you can explicitly set the sampling frequency within its parameter page. When working with modulated signals, the sampling frequency is defined by the data rate times samples per symbol, and one divided by the sampling frequency is the time step between samples. Note that when you're working with digital data, by definition, it has one sample per symbol, and hence its sampling frequency is equal to its data rate. A digital to real block can be used to change the sampling frequency by setting samples per symbol to a value other than one. A change sampling frequency block can be found under the signal processing node in the elements tree, and this block can be used to change the sampling frequency of a signal. Also, sampling frequency is used to define the FFT size of a spectrum measurement. Multiple input blocks such as an adder, mixer, and combiner, require the same sampling frequency at each port. Auto propagation, a time step, assists you in making sure that the sampling frequency at the ports are equal. A clear example of auto propagation of time step is the case where you have an LO feeding a mixer and the LO doesn't have its sampling frequency explicitly set. In this case, the LO will be assigned the sampling frequency registered at the mixer's input port. For more information on autopropagation of time step, please refer to the VSS modeling guide under help, which can be found on the toolbar. Keep in mind that when you're working with filters in VSS, we're designing the filters relative to the incoming sampling frequency. Let's take a break from the presentation and go into the VSS and look at two examples working with sampling frequency. In this project, we have two QPSK sources being combined. The first QPSK source has its data rate set to two megahertz and samples per symbol set to eight. Therefore, the sampling frequency of the source is 16 megahertz. The second QPSK source has its rate set to 1.2353 megahertz and its samples per symbol set to 16. Let's run the simulation, look at the resulting spectrum, and take note of the system diagram once again. You will see here that the sampling frequency of the first QPSK source is 19. 7648 megahertz, and through use of the change sampling frequency block, we forced the second source to have the same sampling frequency, therefore ensuring that we can combine the two signals. In the second project, we have a filter, and we've defined its parameters as such, a center frequency of 1 gigahertz, and a bandwidth of approximately 20 megahertz. We're using vector network analyzers to analyze uh, the response. In one instance, we set the sampling frequency to one gigahertz. In the next instances, we set the sampling frequency to four gigahertz and eight gigahertz. If we look at the response, the red response is using a sampling frequency of 8 gigahertz. The blue response is using a sampling frequency of 4 gigahertz. And the black response, indeed, is the response that we want, and that's using a sampling frequency of 1 gigahertz. Another aspect of sampling frequency is it defines the span on the x-axis of a spectrum measurement. In addition, 
the center frequency is used to define the bounds of a spectrum plot. So in summary, rules of thumb that you should use when working with VSS are manually set the sampling frequency of a source, make sure your sampling frequency is kept to a minimum yet is high enough to display the signals of interest, always check your filter response with the sampling frequency used in your RF link and keep in mind that the sampling frequency sets the FFT size. The larger the FFT size, the longer it'll take for the spectrum measurement to be generated.